I'm Freddie Silva, and uh, I'm a best-selling author of six books and uh, I think about 12 documentaries now, um, all of them dealing with ancient systems of knowledge, which is what I research, the origin of the temple culture, and gods, anything in the ancient world. And uh, at some point, even despite the fact that I'm starting getting a little bit old, I still want to be a rock star. Oh, anything that precedes official history. Uh, I like dealing with anything that's like, remotely old, and the older it gets, the better, because it's harder to find. So I tend to deal with things which go back to at least 12,000 years to understand where we've arrived. And only by understanding the origin of things do we understand why we're here and what we're doing here. So it really is to dissect the ancient world, uh, the understanding of the mythologies of the ancient world, the building techniques of uh, megalithic structures and how they enhance uh, ourselves as people, as spiritual beings, and what benefit do they, they give to the planet. So it's really learning about an ancient system of knowledge that also incorporates ancient technology, if you want to call it that. Uh, I call it the spiritual technology, uh, to see how it's evolving human consciousness. I was drawing pyramids when I was three. I had a, an interest in uh, geology and the ancient world. I grew up collecting dinosaur eggs when I was growing up in Portugal, which is kind of fun. And uh, one of my first childhood memories, my earliest memory, was collecting the books of Tintin, who was this wonderful reporter that goes around the world solving mysteries. And the other group of books was Asterix the Gaul, and they're protecting a village that is run by all these obelisks. Little did I know what influence those two books would have on my life as an investigative reporter and a person who appreciates large upright rocks. So I think these things were hardwired, uh, like they are in anybody. And uh, even though I spent half of my life navigating the uh, complexities of the material and commercial world to uh, make a, you know, a living, eventually I just decided to go back to my original passion, which was to really to understand the true history of what, uh, where we come from, because the official version of events is a very sorry state. They're only giving you a tiny fragment of the truth. And I wanted to find out how we came to end up here. Why did they build enormous pyramids? Why did they build enormous temples? And why did they bother going through all the trouble of building things that survive into our lifetime? Because they do. Uh, they could have just used bricks and saved themselves the trouble. So it was the curiosity of looking for the ancient to, in order to understand our purpose here. And also, what benefit does it bring to us as spiritual beings to make us a, a better civilization? Because I think that at one point they had that understanding. We lost it because of the natural events that have befallen the planet over time. But I think it's a point now where we are regaining that understanding in order to go to another a new jump in civilization. I think the time uh, for this information that is so old is now appropriate for us to get, take the next leap of uh, faith into the future. I will say Graham Hancock, who is still alive, obviously, I hope, um, has been a huge inspiration at the beginning because of the way he methodically catalogues his research. And uh, Fingerprints of the Gods was a, a huge influence on my life. There was also work done by uh, Tom Kenyon with the Hathor material, uh, who taught me a lot about the invisible nature of things. Uh, and then my biggest uh, uh, informant was John Michel, who's passed away. Uh, he was an Aquarian Antiquarian. He was born in February. And uh, it was his style of writing and his knowledge and the way he takes these very complicated subjects, usually mathematical, and he neatly, succinctly, elegantly, and romantically puts them together in a sentence without a wasted word. And he became a huge influence in the way I write and the way I think to take out the rubbish, bring it down to its lowest common denominator in a way that is elegant, entertaining, and at the same time, my own voice comes out as well. But, uh, the, uh, 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 but the most of all is to figure out how you can uh, translate very complex issues into the shortest amount of space so that it becomes beneficial to people. Otherwise, it's just a brain exercise for, yeah, for intellectuals, and that's not going to get very far, is it? I guess listening to a good piece of music uh, at least once a day, something that keeps me focused on a certain feeling, uh, and it motivates my feelings. So if I'm feeling sorry for myself, I'll listen to some really... Uh, morose music from Ireland, uh, and then I'll get over it. Uh, if I'm feeling happy, I'll get some good bop, or I'll get some good heavy metal to give my energy a good boost. Um, just reading something that makes me, that gives me confidence to keep going. Uh, I, I don't know the answers to everything. Uh, I'm not perfect. If I was perfect, I wouldn't have been 
incarnated. Uh, so I'm struggling with everybody else to figure out the answers too. So anything that, uh, any, anything that I read in a newspaper or uh, even on Facebook, anyone that says something complimentary will just give me for the day, give me that sort of confidence that I know that someone's benefiting from something that I'm doing. And it, it takes me to the next plateau. So it's, uh, it, it, or even a film, just watching a good film that uh, motivates me. And it could be a violent film. It could be like Gladiator. But essentially, even watching Gladiator, the end story is about the overcoming of obstacles. And you can see the support that uh, the character had all the way through the film. So it's justifiable violence that gets this guy to eventually join his family in the other world. But it's those moments that, uh, where you sort of, uh, you know, you bring all the tools that you need to get you through the day and, uh, and keep you motivated. So it's anything. I, I draw from a very wide palette. The Ancient Civilizations episode, uh, where we, uh, it really touches on all the subjects that I work on. And it's kind of funny that uh, we had 10 episodes to cover in one day and so much information and, uh, <laughs> uh, and Melissa dr uh, drawing all of these questions which I've been working on for weeks. Uh, but it's only realized how much you've acquired and how much of it is now useful so you can build up the library of information to build up all these programs and uh, it's wonderful. Uh, we don't plan these things, they just happen. Uh, so it's a good way to bring a lot of my experiences and a lot of my uh, personal interactions into the, the fold in a way that probably would never would come to uh, fruition because it takes me a long time to write a book. Um, so that's what we were doing. We were sort of catching up on uh, about 15 years of experience and knowledge that I uh, just dumped onto camera. I want them to be look at this information and not follow me uh, for any reason because, you know, tomorrow if I wake up and find that my compass was pointing south, uh, that's not going to be of any help to you. I'm not the story. The story is the information that I'm giving to you because it's my experience and it's stuff that I've taken a lot of time at a huge personal cost to bring out. And I think it's important. So take out the bits that make sense to you because not all of it will. Some of it you'll think is absolute nonsense. But take out the things that make sense and put them in a toolbox. And that toolbox is going to be your toolbox that you're going to use through life. And you'll find as the information becomes more personal and you apply that information and you see that it makes sense, go back to the toolbox a few years from now and realize I'm a much better person than when I began. And when they die, like you, hopefully they'll leave a much better person and they'll leave the planet in a better state than you found it. I don't think the world will ever be perfect. I don't think I want the world to be perfect for the very reason that Earth is an experimental way station in the cosmos. And everybody said this, the mystery schools, for thousands of years, that we come here as souls to work on ourselves. Uh, it's a big sandbox, if you call it. And some people will come here and they'll build a beautiful sandcastle. And there'll always be a bully that comes along and knocks down your sandcastle. And that's the way it's always been. Uh, we hear about a golden age of the gods, but it wasn't that golden. It was golden for some people, and it was extreme barbarity for others. And I think it's always going to be that. But slowly, over time, it improves. Very, very slowly. Things happen glacially here on Earth. It's frustrating, especially for people who know otherwise, but that's just the way it is. I always think that uh, that will be the perfect world where you incarnate in a place where it's a free-for-all and you do the best you can, you be the example to somebody else, and you leave the place in a better shape than you found it.